Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today we will talk about microservice timeouts. Let's say we have two services, A and B, and A calls B through an HTTP call. Let's say service B is unresponsive for some reason. In this case, A will have to wait for a very long time unless B gets back to it. This can create a bunch of issues upstream. There might be other services that are calling on to service A, which has to wait now, given service A is busy. This is where timeouts come in. With timeouts, what you can do is you can tell service A to wait up to five seconds for a response from service B. Now, if A cannot get a response back before that time, it's just going to close the connection and move on to uh, the next thing. This makes sure that service A is available and not occupied with that one HTTP call for a very long time. Let's say you hit the timeout. So you waited for five seconds, service B did not get back to you. Now what? So there are multiple things you can do. The first one is you can assume that the request was successful. This is the last thing you should do. That's because you should never assume anything that's happening in the server because uh, you don't know for sure whether service B, service B processed your request or not. So it's not safe to just assume that the request was successful. The other thing you can do is use a default response in case service B does not get back to you. This is a pretty safe choice. Uh, it depends on your use case, but let's say you have a use case where having a default value makes sense. In that case, you can just use a default value and uh, not try to call service B yet again. The third option, and this is the one that is used more often, is to retry automatically. That means if service B does not get back to you within five seconds, you kick up another request, wait a farther five seconds, and you can keep on retrying for an X number of times. Uh, there are other trade-offs you have to make with retrying multiple times, but that is one of the very one of the very common practice. Now let's say what we decide to adopt is retrying whenever a service call fails. There are a few things that you should keep in mind when uh, adopting this approach. The first one is keep your operations idempotent, which means given you're retrying after a failure, that means there is the potential that you will be doing the same task on service B all over again. So let's say the first request was actually successful and you did carry out some certain pieces of logic, but A does not know that. Now when A kicks up another request, the same operation has to happen on B all over again. So it's very important to make sure if you carry the same logic all over again, there are no other repercussions that you need to worry about. The other thing you should keep in mind is exponential backoff. That means, let's say the first time you try and then you wait for five seconds and then you try again. The next time you're trying again, you should wait for some seconds before trying again. So with every successive retry, you want to wait longer and longer to give you the to give service B a chance to start working again, instead of literally just like keep on spamming service B with retries after retries. The last thing to keep in mind is to limit the number of retries. You don't want service B to retry indefinitely. That means service A would just stay stuck on this one request trying to somehow ram this one through. Instead, you want to retry a fixed number of times, let's say three to five times, and still if the request is failing, that means service B is like down for some serious reasons, and you should just move on to the next request, or as mentioned before, use some kind of a default value uh, to return as a response. Let's look at some of the issues that can happen if you're retrying excessively. Let's say we have three services, A, B, and C. Both A and C are calling B. If you have multiple retry on all the services, A, for, for one request, A is going to retry it five times if it's running into an error. C is going to retry 10 times if it's running into an error. So where it should have been two requests, one from A, one from C, now you're having five from A and 10 from C which is totaling up to 15 requests. And you can see as you like keep on increasing the upstream number of requests, this can have a snowballing effect and just keep on delaying and delaying as more and more requests are piling up. 
So instead of retrying too many times, you want to keep the retry number very limited so that if you retry like two or three times and it's not it's not working, it's safe to just assume that it won't work for now. So just either fail loudly or return a default response. Now let's see why do we want to use short timeouts. There are multiple reasons for wanting to use short timeouts, but the most important one is uh, to keep in mind that the service dependency can be very long. So in this example, you can see we have a chain of four services, one calling uh, the other. So let's say a user uh, performs a certain action and your front end is hitting service A. To carry out this logic, service A is calling B, B is calling C, and C is calling D. So as you can see, there is like a long chain. Each of them will have potential timeouts. Let's say down the chain, service D is the one that is failing. In this case, if your timeouts are not short, what is going to happen is A is going to have its own timeout. Let's say it's like 10 seconds. B will have farther 10 seconds. C will have 10 more. So as you can see, it is going to pile up if you keep the timeout very, very long. So and all of the services in this chain is going to be overwhelmed by that one request if you use longer timeouts. So you want to use shorter timeouts to avoid such a snowballing effect. So to summarize, as a rule of thumb, you should always use a timeout uh, no matter how you're talking to another microservice. You should know that in a network call, a service call can easily fail or take too long. That's why you want to put a timeout uh, just to make sure your, call, your calling service is not just waiting indefinitely. And when it comes to the duration of the timeout, you want to keep it very short in case uh, you have multiple services in your system and you don't want to cause a snowballing effect by just having very, very long timeouts. So just to summarize, two things you should remember. One is always keep timeouts when you're calling another microservice and keep these timeouts short to avoid like a uh, strain on your resources or uh, just a snowballing effect. That is all from me today, guys. Hopefully you learned something. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I will catch you on the next one. Bye.